Okay, so now let's move on to the back and let me show you what you need to do for the back installation of the rotors. If you do have this rear tire hugger, you're going to have to remove it. If you do not have the rear tire hugger, then you don't have to worry about this part. Also, if you do have the rear swing arm sliders, like I had in the front, I already removed mine, but if you have yours as well, you're gonna have to remove them. If you do not have anything back here, then you don't have to worry about that part either. All right, so now that we got the rear tire hugger off, that's only if you got the rear tire hugger. So now on this part, going to have to remove the rear axle nut but before that we have to loosen up the chain so to do so we got to grab our two open end wrenches our two 12 millimeter open end wrenches and then go ahead and loosen up the rear one so we could get the, the other one off so just put it in like so and then put the other one in like this and then just go ahead and break it loose right now the camera's in my way so i can't really get on there so but just break this nut loose and then uh spin this one off uh, not all the way completely off but just enough so you could uh, get this one uh, loosened up and same thing on the other uh, other side you want to do the same on this side as well where the chain is located same thing put the open and wrenches here break the first one out unscrew it a little bit and then loosen up this other one a little bit more all right so let's go ahead and do that okay now that we got the little 12 millimeter screws already uh loose next we're gonna have to loosen is the axle bolt and this side is going to be 22 millimeters on the other side is going to be a 19 millimeters so go ahead and put your breaker bar and uh, make sure that you uh, go ahead and remove the bolt all right so now before we get the wheel off we want to make sure that we get the chain off of the sprocket not to do so is what i did is that i moved the screws as far as i could all the way towards the back and you want to do this for both sides and then just pretty much grab your hammer and then just give it a, a little bit of a tap on both ends that would push the, the wheel forward after that you want to make sure that you're very careful in this apartment and plus you're going to be needing to clean your hands if you wear some latex gloves that would help a lot so just grab your chain and push it towards you towards towards you so just grab a little a section of it push it towards you and then turn the wheel uh going backwards and this is going to get the chain off of the sprocket make sure that you're careful on not pinching your fingers when doing so but once you see that it kind of partially went off you could just go ahead and remove your hand and then just get the chain completely off so as you can see now it's off of the bike so i'm just going to go ahead and pull it a little bit and then just get it over the swing arm like so all right so now that we got the chain off of the sprocket now we're going to go ahead and get the axle bolt out i already loosened the bolt from the other side so i'm just going to grab my hammer and then just give it a few taps and then get it off from this side. And also like we did with the front wheel, good idea to put something underneath the, the bottom wheel to give it that support to get the axle bolt out. So I already got a little bit, just keep on going until you get the, the whole axle completely off and then the wheel's gonna drop on the block that you have in the bottom, which makes it easier because if you don't have anything underneath the wheel, that all that weight's gonna be uh, still resting on the axle rod and it's gonna be a little bit harder to actually get it off. So having some support on the wheel, even lifting it up a little bit will help on getting this rod right out. Now that we got the whole rod out, as you can see and how long it is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this off to the side for now. And now we're gonna go ahead and actually remove the wheel from the bike. I figure I, I removed the bolts uh, for the rotor. It's, uh, uh, on the bike uh, just because you know i'm not that strong i don't have a workbench to actually remove the bolts so i figure this will give me the the leverage i need to actually remove the bolts all right so let's go ahead and remove the wheel out of the bike you want to make sure that you're cautious with the brake caliper there so from here you could actually move the caliper bracket up and show you a different angle of what I'm, how it looks like on this end so if you were to look at from this end we can actually move the caliper bracket up and then just go ahead and slide the wheel out okay at this time you want to go ahead and grab your rotor you want to make sure that you use the alcohol to clean out both sides of the rotor and on this rotor it's not directional so you can just go ahead and use it on any side go ahead put that on there make sure it's lined up good then go ahead and grab your bolts and then put a little bit of thread lock on your bolt and then go ahead and put all the bolts down hand tighten them down for now then you could go ahead and torque them down to 17 foot pounds all right now to go ahead and torque down the bolts so we're all done with all these bolts. All right, now let's go ahead and take it over to the bike. All right, so it's gonna be the tricky part on getting your wheel back on. Make sure that you put your block over here to help support the wheel. So when you put your axle rod through it, it'll be a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and stand up the wheel. Just make sure that any wheel spacers that had came out, like obviously you could see mine had came out over here, make sure you put them back in. So let's go ahead and put this guy, little guy in. All right, so now that that wheel spacer in, make sure that the other wheel spacer on the other side is in as well. As you can see, it is right there. All right, so now before we actually put the wheel in, we want to make sure that we have our brake caliper in its spot. All right, guys, if you look over here inside the swing arm, you're going to see that there's going to be this notch right over here. Now, that notch is going to correspond with your brake caliper bracket. 
which goes right over here. So now when you put your brake caliper back on, you want to just make sure that it slides in over here like so. So let me show you what I mean. So I have to remove the whole entire bracket for myself, but just like I said, there is the notch right there, which is going to correspond with this guy right here. Just make sure that you slide it in its spot. Let's go ahead and slide it in like so. And there's nothing really at this point holding on to it, just that that notch is right there. It still can easily come off as you can see. You just want to make sure that it's in that spot. As long as you got it in that spot, just make sure that when you put your wheel in, that everything is lining up good and that you're holding everything. Because like I said, there is nothing really holding on to that. That's just kind of like a guidance for the, to hold the brake caliper so it could be lined up with your brake rotor. All right, so now that you guys know on exactly what is in that spot and how to put your brake caliper on, let's go ahead and get the wheel back in its spot. All right, guys, so here we go. Uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky with having the camera kind of in my way on doing this, but I'll try to do the best I can. Like I said, make sure that you're holding on to the little spacers that are on the wheels because those tend to fall off fairly easy so as you're putting and holding on to this you're going to have to hold on to the brake caliper making sure that the brake caliper doesn't fall off and all at the same time trying to put your axle rod right back in its spot all right guys hopefully it, this will be the best angle i can get to show you on how i'm going to be putting the wheel back on all right so let's get to it and get the wheel back in its place let's see wheel will be right here all right so make sure that my block is right there to kind of support the wheel and don't worry about putting the chain on the on the wheel when you do it just make sure that you get the wheel in there first and then we'll do the chain later right now we're just kind of concentrating that the little wheel spacers don't fall off of the wheel and at the same time holding on to the caliper bracket Alrighty, guys what i did was actually remove the chain adjusters out of my way because they were just becoming in my way so here's the chain adjusters uh, they were kind of just dangling and being in my way. So what I did is I removed them from both sides and if you wonder what the chain adjuster looks like outside of the bike. This is pretty much all it is. Nothing that spectacular. All right, so now that I got the chain adjuster out of both sides, I was it was still a little bit hard to get it in there, but once you get it and you line everything up, it should be good. So next what you're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the chain adjusters right back in on both sides. And then next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my axle rod, which is right over there, and then I'm just gonna slide it right through and pop it up to this side and then put the, put the bolt. All right, now that we got the axle rod through, I wanted to show you guys this because, you know, if you try to put it that these chain adjusters, plastic parts, are these back ends actually go in one direction if you notice that there is a little tab right over here this little tab actually corresponds with the su another side you see that little notch right over here that little tab goes into that notch because if you put it in this way obviously it's not going to fit it's going to have a gap and your alignment's going to be off so make sure that you turn it over and you get that little notch with that gap therefore as you can see now the, the back end is on there good you want to grab your your washer put that in and then go ahead and put your axle bolts on now before i was actually adjusting the wheel i kind of just wanted to show you guys because i'm just so excited to have the the brake um disc rotor on and when I spin it, it just looks so good compared to the original stock one. All right, now that we've got the wheel on, so let's go ahead and we're going to put our chain on. So to put the chain on, you want to make sure that you get it over the chain adjuster area. And then just put a, a part of it onto the rear sprocket. Once you get it on there, go ahead and spin the wheel. Now, if you have the same thing, just make sure that you get it over the tow guard uh, before you do anything. All right, so now let's go ahead, hold it in place, and then... Go ahead and spin the wheel until chain goes on to the sprocket. Now, if your chain is not going onto the sprocket as you spin the wheel and it gets tight, you want to make sure that you have your wheel as, as far forward as possible to do that. Make sure that this part is all the way out and then loosen out that first nut over here. Make sure you do that on both sides. Get your hammer and then just go ahead and tap it and you're going to start seeing the wheel move forward. So keep doing it until you see the wheel go as far forward as possible. All right, go ahead and put that on there. I'm going to do that for both sides. So just make sure you do the same thing to make sure that the wheel is far forward as possible. That way you can get your, your chain over the sprocket. Now that you got your chain onto the sprocket, as you can see it's already on there. You may have to tap it a few times just to make sure that the, that it was going on there good. All right, so next one to do is you want to make sure that you align your wheel and your chain. And Motion Pro makes this pretty cool tool that you put over here onto your sprocket. So let's go ahead and turn this little piece over here. And then you just go ahead and put it on there. All right, so it goes right on to your sprocket right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and loosen up the chain adjuster screws. And you want to make sure you do that for both sides. 
When adjusting the rear wheel, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the indication marks that are located over here by the chain adjusters. So just make sure that when you count the lines to make sure that you count the same amount of lines on both ends. Also, when you're tightening down the bolts for the chain adjusters, make sure that you know that as your tightening is down, the chain is also going to get tight as well. So you want to make sure that when you're tightening them down to constantly check your chain, you want to make sure that you don't have your chain extremely tight because having it extremely tight can stretch out the chain and possibly when riding, one of the links can break, also cause it a really bad accident. So you definitely don't want to do that. So make sure that as you're tightening down the adjusters to make sure that the check the tension of the chain. Okay, so this is uh, this could also help you too. I wanted to share with you guys. So what you want to do is now that you got everything seated, turn this first bolt on the chain adjuster all the way hand tight until it feels really snug. Once you do that for both ends, you want to go ahead, grab a marker, a Sharpie, a black one, red one, it doesn't really matter. And what I would do is just color the top end of the bolt. Just make sure that it's, you know, facing up on, on, on you. So just go ahead and, and, and color that just, just one one side you don't need to do all four sides we're not painting the, the bolt or anything much what you're doing is that you're kind of creating a point of reference uh, on the bolt so you want to go ahead paint only one side to make sure one is facing up and on the other side make sure that the, both of the bolts are you know hand tight and kind of snug where they won't turn anymore so go ahead paint one on one side and then go ahead and paint one on the other side now what this like i said is created is a, a point of reference so when you start turning your adjustment screws you could actually see the point of where it, it, it lands or or you know you could count how many turns you did when you were you're tightening the bolt and then besides this also you want to make sure on your little window here on the indication marks to make sure that you have the same amount of number here of the lines with accordance with the other side and then besides that you also want to make sure that your tool lined up with your chain as you can see it is uh, centerly it's already lined up but I haven't tightened on the bolts but I'm gonna be tightening them down but as I'm doing it the bar can move this way it can move that way but like I said, you want to make sure when you're doing it that everything lines up perfectly. Okay, I've already tightened down my chain adjusters and so far, like I said, the marking was just a point of reference. And as you can see, I didn't end up with my marking on top. Actually, it ended up being here in the bottom. So it ended up here in the bottom for this side. And on this side, it actually ended up being at the top. Like I said, the markings are just for a point of reference. So you could to make sure that you, when you turn them, that you're counting, you know, how many revolutions or whatnot, or, you know, just making sure that you know where the, the point of reference is really on the indication marks on the chain adjustments as you could see over here i have four and i also made sure that on this side i had four so they're they're both four and four so now i know that part is aligned and then also as you could see the rod on the chain or the my uh, my alignment tool it is centered and not off to any side left or right so that is centered and then lastly the the slack or, or whatnot of tension on the chain as you could see it's not extremely loose nor extremely tight so once you check all of those adjustments uh then you're all set to go so the only thing left to do would be to go ahead and tighten and torque down your bolt to 41 foot pounds and don't forget to remove your alignment tool okay now that you got everything else all tightened up and ready to go so last but not least go ahead and put your little caps so let's go ahead and put those over if you don't have your little covers anymore that came with your bike then you won't put anything there now if you did the installation of the rear swing arm sliders you want to go ahead and reinstall these back in if you did not do this part then you have nothing to put there and you're already done with this section okay so that's pretty much it for this department but if you did have the rear tire hugger now would be a good time to also reinstall that before you actually put your rear swing arm sliders Alrighty guys, that pretty much concludes this installation on how to install these disc rotor kit. It makes the bike have a better stance. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and you haven't already, smash that like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell, that way you guys are up to date with my latest videos. And if you have any comments, leave them in the comments below. If you happen to hit that dislike button, please let me know in the comments on what I did wrong, what I could improve, or what is it that you dislike about the video. And thank you for for watching.